the navigation that I'm on right now, Calder and Hebel, it's 21 and a half miles long and I've almost done it all. I'm in a place called Murfield and I've got two miles to go before I turn round and can come back the other way. Why am I turning round? Because I want to go somewhere else that's all the way over on the east side of the network. Murfield's claim to fame is that it is the birthplace of Sir Patrick Stewart. Make it so, number one. <laughs> There's a strong boat building history in the area. Uh, 1776, the first one appeared in Shepley Bridge. And this is the most recent one, Murfield Boat Company. They are producing some incredibly huge wide beams, very impressive stuff, but also some narrow boats as well, and all fitting them out within their factory here. Um, and it's just, it was really interesting to see the different stages of construction. And of course, without a washing machine on board, there's always the stop to the local laundrette. And this one is one of the best I've been in so far. I've been here 12 years. I think we're just offering that nice service, you know, and it's just you can drop it off and pick it up and come yeah. back and pick it up. Nice cup of tea, some nice music in the background. And then uh, once in a while we'll get celebrities like yourself coming through. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all yeah, good. no, it's just a great, great place to come. Recommend yeah. it. You're all welcome. You're all welcome. <laughs> He's not paying me to say this, by the way. No. He hasn't given me a free wash or anything. <laughs> Rubbish, what do I get? <laughs> uh, I'm more next to a Lidl, so shopping has been really easy. And parking as well has been fantastic. I even found some excellent parking on the back of this recovery truck as my clutch failed right in the middle of the town. On the traffic lights, had to be pushed around the corner by some locals and then just called for assistance from there. I'll probably park the truck up for summer, but for now it's, it's still quite handy. And there's some great pubs around here, some of which you might see later on. One of the most surprising things was that I... Got my ears syringed. I know it's a bit gross, isn't it? But um, if you're like me, you get a build-up of wax in your ears until the point at which you can't really hear anything. So it's not good when you're trying to um, yeah, make music and things like that. It makes it very, very difficult. But yeah, so I managed to have this girl on board who actually was able to do... Even using the power off my 12-volt batteries to um, to power a machine to gently get rid of all the the earwax and that was really cool <laughs> gross but cool <laughs> is this the first time you've done this on a narrowboat yep how'd you feel then. was it was it a bit wobbly um not particularly <laughs> it felt fine i really enjoyed it actually i'll do good. it again more, <laughs> more narrowboat micro suction please but anyway i think it's time to get going and looking at my map here i've got two miles um, of the, the navigation to do until I'm going to turn round. I don't need to go any further to, to say that I've done all of the all of this um, area of the network and there's other areas that I need to go get on to do that I really I, you know, I really want to do it before it gets too late in the year. So I'm going to turn around at Cooper Bridge that's in about two miles time and I'm only going to do about a couple of locks on the way there. <laughs> All it says about Murfield in here is all services, a useful place for supplies. That's it. I think it's a little bit more than that. When there has been a little bit of rainfall, sometimes this flood lock is shut whilst others are open on the, on the same level, on the same section of the river. So we've been told by the local boaters just to go for it. But yeah, it's a very, very short section of the river, so we're not worried. This is pretty mad. I've never actually been in a flood lock. It's a very odd sort of shape. And we've got two gates, one on the riverside and one on the, the canalised section. 
but yeah, it's just going to take a while to fill it up because it is quite a large, large lock, a lot of area to fill. And it's really difficult to moor sensibly, <laughs> as you can see. The weir I'm just passing, it hasn't been there that long. Some of the boaters can remember when there wasn't one. And they say that has affected the um, reading on the, on the flood lock there. But, I don't know, it's the Canal and River Trust bank staff who will come and shut these locks. So they surely know better, don't they? like two chimney stacks popping out of the river like a steam tug boat has uh, sunk <laughs> probably one of the saddest things about cruising um, along the Calder and Hebel is seeing trees with plastic bags hanging off them but when you get such varying river levels, that is what happens. You know, rubbish always blows into the canal or the river and then it just gets hung up on low hanging branches. At this point, I've got to say, it's unusual for everything to work, and it has done, isn't it? Every single paddle has been all right on this one. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. <laughs> all right, I'm just going past South Pennine Boat Club. Ooh, and uh, I'm going to leave my fellow boater here more up and check out the area. I'm going to crack on because we're almost at the end of my little section that I want to do. Bridge is incredible. The detail on the ironwork on it is just amazing. I want to see a train go underneath it. <laughs> and I love how it is, it's just kind of rusty all over pretty much, but still there's green on it as well. So it's almost like a shabby chic bridge. I love it. peaceful stretch of the navigation and not really any signs of industrial goings on or, um, or plastic bags hanging on trees so it's gorgeous up here gorgeous just about to go through another flood lock this one is open so no no issues there Wow, 
well, suddenly we're back in the world of industry with all these pipe bridges, train bridges and foot bridges as well going over the top. So we're back on the river and we're seeing all the plastic bags again. <laughs> The problem that can arise if you've got a long, long narrow boat, not a long boat, that's the Vikings, um, yeah, is that you're too close to lock gates that might be leaking very heavily. So, um, yeah, the water that might rush in into your boat, which has happened to a few boaters I know, yeah, you just got to be careful. Or get a shorter boat, don't show off. It does seem like a bit of a box-ticking mission, this, but um, it's fun. I'm loving it. <laughs> Although I'm thinking of, oh, yeah, but I've got to turn around, so we go through all the bits I've just done. Right, finally made it back to Murfield. Took me a while, but I'm ready now. I'm ready for. Right, no, abandon that. It's just far too busy for me. Honestly, I just I don't like it when there's so many people all squashed in, and I couldn't even get my camera out to film anything because it's just so packed. Sorry about that. Let's uh, let's find another one. Much like Leeds, they've got this dark tunnel lit up with uh, well, all these lights, LED lights. I think this is pretty cool. And there's some great graffiti here. Welcome to Murfield. This is the next one, it's right next to the marina. Let's check it out. It's actually right next to the canal as well. Let's see what's inside this pub. People are so lovely and friendly in this town that I only went to this pub a couple of times and I got on first name terms with people. This is Lance. The barman, he's also a boater as well. The newer side of this pub definitely attracts a younger crowd and they have music and uh, stuff on the TV. On the other side of the bar, it's an older pub, as in the actual building, not the people that drink there. It's all ages, it's just a bit quieter. And it was great just to chat with people there. Um, but I was looking for something a bit more. 
um, pool table, maybe a jukebox, just something a bit more going on and um, a real community pub. Right, this is the place, here we go. <laughs> And now I want to announce some new members of the Crank It crew. So first in the book, Dom O'Connor. Then we've got Ian Catterall, who's a producer. All these people are supporting the vlogs. Fiona and Matthew. Amy Abnett. Lawrence Kitson. Jason Brownhill. Dean Brockley, who's another producer. Really helping me out. And I couldn't make these videos without you guys on Patreon. If you want to sign up to the Crank It crew, you know what to do. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I couldn't remember the greatest song in the world.